multiple years ago when I was 19, I first discovered Jordan Peterson and he helped me learn a lot about what it's like to become a adult and mature and take life seriously and ask the right questions. And I was actually rereading this book over the past weekend with my girlfriend, 12 Rules for Life. And it's something that really, something really stood out to me that I think I want to read to all you guys because I think it really relates with quitting porn and just facing life in general. And this comes from chapter one in the 12 Rules for Life, which is called Stand Up Straight With Your Shoulders Back. While that might sound a little, you know, interesting at first, maybe you haven't heard of it, but I guess just to give a quick overview before I dive into this specific idea is standing up straight with your shoulders back is like realizing that when you confront reality and confront the world with a air of confidence and competence at the same time, you will attract better people into your life, better scenarios, you'll attract a better wife, these kinds of things. Like if you're going to take the world and kind of just like shy away from it or sulk or complain or those kinds of things, you will not achieve as good of a life just probabilistically. Like it's just not going to happen as probably. And, you know, just evolutionarily, like when you stand up straight and you walk into a room, you are the man that other people notice. Like there's some people who you'll notice kind of just walk in, kind of sagging. Like you're always like, mm, whenever someone's sagging over, hunched over, giving like darted eye contact, not much eye contact, like that's a sign that that person is potentially up to no good or other side of it could be they're just not confident in their skin and they have some, you know, maturing to do. And, but it definitely shows about someone's character. If they're able to compose themselves and stand up straight and talk confidently, that is something that gives someone an edge in a room. Like my goal when I walk into the gym is to walk and strut with my, you know, shoulders back, making eye contact and acknowledging people, you know, saying hello. And that kind of thing just makes you stand out as a person. But, you know, this whole idea of standing up straight is not just a physical thing, though I definitely recommend do it. Even if you don't feel confident, stand up more straight, look people in the eyes, give someone a firm handshake, and you're going to truly become a person that people are going to want to be around. And that's an awesome thing. And so I'm going to start reading. We'll see how long this takes, but I think it's really powerful. So standing up straight with your shoulders back is not something that is only physical because you're not only a body. You're a spirit, so to speak, a psyche as well. Standing up physically also implies and invokes and demands standing up metaphysically. Standing up means voluntary, voluntarily accepting the burden of being. Your nervous system responds in an entirely different manner when you face the demands of life voluntarily. You respond to a challenge. Instead of bracing for a catastrophe, you see the gold the dragon hoards. Instead of shrinking in terror from all the all-too-real fact of the dragon, you step forward to take your place in the dominance hierarchy, or competence hierarchy, which is probably a better word, and occupy your territory, manifesting your willingness to defend, expand, and transform it. That all can occur practically or symbolically, as a physical or as a conceptual restructuring. To stand up straight with your shoulders back is to accept the terrible responsibility of life with eyes wide open. It means deciding to voluntarily transform the chaos of potential into the realities of habitable order. It means adopting the burden of self-conscious vulnerability and accepting the end of un unconscious paradise of childhood, where finitude and morality are only dimly comprehended. It means willingly undertaking the sacrifices necessary to generate a productive and meaningful reality. It means acting to please God in ancient language. So I'm going to pause right there and just say, like, as a man in general, I think it's definitely our responsibility to confront our responsibilities that face us, confront the realities that occur. Like, if you're just about to become a father and you struggle with a specific habit, 
that you know is going to make you a worse father. Like, it is your responsibility to slay that dragon, or else you will pass down this habit and this, you know, lying and, you know, the secretness to your son and daughter. Like, they're going to look at you as not the greatest role model. And that's what this book is kind of referencing here. Like, standing up straight with your shoulders back is kind of accepting that responsibility. Like, as a man, I got to provide financially. I got to provide emotional support. I got to provide intellect. I got to provide, you know, a listening ear. Like, these are all things you need to provide. And if you're going down and doing things that you know are making you weaker or not respect yourself, you're not going to be as good of a leader. You're not going to be able to provide in the way that you want to provide and know you should. And so I just thought this book was really good and I'm just going to keep reading because I think it's very powerful here. To stand up straight with your shoulders back means building the ark that protects the world from the flood, guiding your people through the desert after they have escaped tyranny, making your way away from the comfortable home and country, and speaking the prophetic word to those who ignore the widows and children. It means shouldering the cross that marks the X, the place where you and being intersect so terribly. It means casting dead, rigid, and too tyrannical order back into the chaos in which it was generated. It means withstanding the ensuing uncertainty and establishing, in consequence, a better, more meaningful, and more productive order. And so, you know, he brings in a lot of biblical references that I think are really interesting and powerful as well because a lot of people view the Bible as a bit of a history lesson. Make sure you remember the genealogy and you remember these specific stories that actually happened and remember the order of them, remember who was the son of who, and remember what they did. And to me, those stories mean a lot more when you view them through a symbolic lens, a lens that explains that each one of these stories is part of the story that you're going through. The story of Cain and Abel, the story of Noah's Ark, the story of the Israelites escaping Egypt and going into the desert for 40 years. All of those explain different aspects of what you can experience as a human going through the human experience. And, you know, when you view these stories metaphorically, in my opinion, you give such deeper respect to them and it's almost like they become a part of your life on a daily basis without you having to kind of memorize or remember it's more you have taken that lesson and integrated it into your character and i see it as something that i did four years ago and it changed my life instead of just kind of memorizing the the order of the stories i think that's totally important too but viewing it almost like dang I am Jonah, I am Moses, I am any of these other people, and what would I do in that situation? And every single day you're going to have to choose whether you're going to be Cain or whether you're going to be Abel. And these are the things that we have to decide on a daily basis, and that's why I think the Bible is such a deep philosophical and psychological drama that explains who we are and what we're going to face going through this painful but amazing life. So attend carefully to your posture. Quit drooping and hunching around. Speak your mind. Put your de desires forward as if you had a right to them, at least the same right as others. Walk tall and gaze forthrightfully ahead. Dare to be dangerous. Encourage the serotonin to flow plentifully through the neural pathways, desperate for its calming influence. You didn't read the first part of this chapter, but he's talking about how when you have this shoulders back, I'm confronting reality, I'm in charge, I got this handled, if there's an emergency, you can count on me. If you have that mindset, you'll be able to actually get a nice benefit of having serotonin flow to your brain, which makes women look at you more and makes people respect you even more and it makes you respect yourself even more. So it's like this awesome feedback loop. Start doing it and you'll see insane results in your day-to-day -day life. Last few paragraphs here. People, including yourself, will start to assume that you are competent and able, or at least they will not immediately conclude the reverse. Emboldened by positive responses you are now receiving, you'll begin to be less anxious. You'll then find it easier to pay attention to the subtle cues 
socially that people exchange when they are communicating. Your conversations will flow better with fewer awkward pauses. This will make you more likely to meet people, interact with them, and impress them. Doing so will not only genuinely increase the probability that good things happen to you, it will also make those good things feel better when they do happen to you. And I think that's really cool. It's like a lot of guys, they're going through this horrible habit stack of, you know, they're waking up after a rough night's sleep and they're grabbing a carb full, you know, breakfast that's making them have a crash and not perform as well at work, which is making them not get as many amazing marks at work and they're not getting the promotions they want. And their, their wife is like, dang, what's going on? And then, and then, you know, since they're depressed about work and they kind of feel sluggish already because of the food they ate, they might binge, you know, lunch. And now they're seeing their wallet drain and they're also seeing their stomach grow. Then after work, you're exhausted and just so unmotivated. So you go home, you're not motivated for the gym. And so all of a sudden it's like, I'm going to watch TV. I'm going to eat another meal. I'm going to have a snack. I'm going to watch some porn. I'm just going to scroll on social media. I'm going to stay up till 2.45 a.m. when I know I got to wake up at 7. You know, and then you wake up tired again. And a lot of guys live this constant cycle of just pain and, you know, lots of pain. I'm just like, man, that's painful. And I've been there. And when you flip these habits, from my experience, quitting porn, you know, eating just healthier foods that make you feel super energized, having deep conversations on the regular basis, not numbing your mind with TV every single night, maybe, you know, channeling it into a creative outlook or a side hustle idea. You know, once you start engaging in all these things, boom, now you're hitting the gym. Now you're feeling motivated and, oh, I hit the gym. So I might as well eat something that to nourish my muscles and give me some protein. And, you know, you just feel that new style of life and you're going to feel amazing doing it. And it's just that momentum. You got to get started. Thus, strengthened and emboldened, you must choose to embrace being and work for its furtherance and improvement. Thus strengthened, you may be able to stand even during the illness of a loved one, even during the death of a parent, and allow others to find strength alongside you when they would otherwise be overwhelmed with despair. Thus emboldened, you will embark on the voyage of your life. Let your light shine, so to speak, on the heavenly hill and pursue your rightful destiny. Then in the meaning of your life, then the meaning of your life may be sufficient to keep the corrupting influence of mortal despair at bay. Then you may be able to accept the terrible burden of the world and find joy. Look for your inspiration to the vicious lobster with its 350 million years of practical wisdom. Stand up straight with your shoulders back. I just thought this book was really good. I guess that chapter, it's the, va it's the last page and a half of that chapter, chapter one. And I really think it, it, you know, it ties into life in so many ways, but I really think it ties into this idea of quitting porn. Like when you confront this problem that you have head on and decide to make a real change and tell a few people about it and be held accountable very strictly and force yourself out of that situation, all of a sudden you feel way more confident. You're not having these feelings of, oh, I'll never be able to quit. I'm not good enough. Oof, I'm just not a good guy. You know, all these feelings you might have will disappear because all of a sudden you're living the life you thought you never could live and now life is moving at such an amazing fast rate and things are amazing things are happening to you and it's feeling way better because you're not numbing your brain with porn and giving keeping you depressed and your oxytocin and serotonin levels low and then you're not feeling so nervous around women you're not feeling so kind of just uncertain and secretive and hiding in the closet and you know you don't have to feel that way anymore stand up straight face this issue tackle it head on and that's what i recommend and i have a group of leaders and i who take freedom calls with anyone who's interested in learning why are you watching what's making you want to watch and how to overcome this so that you can become the man you never really thought you could become because of this problem so yeah, I hope this video was helpful and I'll see you in the next one. Definitely check out Jordan Peterson's work. I really just thought it was an awesome 
It was an awesome experience I went through for a few years of just diving into his content, checking out his podcast, learning how to be more articulate, and also just learning about so much, you know, becoming well-rounded. So I definitely recommend you pick up a copy. All right. Have a great one.